Hello, this is Mike again from Scratch. And today we're going to take a look at SketchUp, which is a 3D modeling application that may actually be one of the simplest applications out there to use, especially if you are doing non-organic modeling. So if you're looking for a tool for say prototyping levels or getting your levels started or for creating uh, real world assets such as buildings, etc., they probably don't get simpler than SketchUp as we're about to see. So without further ado, let's jump in. We're gonna be using SketchUp Make today. Now SketchUp Make is a completely free version of SketchUp. Um, now you may wonder, okay, so what's the catch? And don't worry, there are catches and they are probably biggest is this big bold one you see in front of you. You cannot use SketchUp Make for commercial projects. Uh, so pretty much if you are making money or being paid to do whatever you're doing, you need to get a license. So um, you can evaluate the software for sure. If you're working on a non-commercial project, you can use this completely free. But if you're at the point where you're going to start selling your game or someone is paying you to make the game assets, then you need a license. And other than that, it has layout, which you don't really care about. You can't author dynamic components, which are kind of like prefabs from the world of game engines, which again, not a really big deal. And you can export to 3D CAD applications, which is very strange because you actually can. So that used to be the huge limit, and that's where um, SketchUp Make was kind of useless for most of us. Uh, but that's just not the case anymore. You can actually export as FBX or whatever format you need and import it into whatever modeling tool you want on the other end. So that doesn't seem to be a limitation anymore. However, if you do need or find yourself needing to get this commercial license, the full version, you are looking at a price tag of $695 US, which I hate getting into the value kind of propositions because it all depends on you. Like if you're getting paid to do this work, that's a couple of days or a couple of weeks at most work. Um, if you're not getting paid, that could be a king's ransom, especially depending on what country you are from. But in the world of 3D applications, it's fairly reasonable. Uh, Modo is a little bit more than that. It's a dedicated model or a very different approach. Um, the Autodesk suites of software are three or four grand. And of course, you've got Blender out there, which is completely free. Uh, 3D Coat is probably about four or 500 bucks. So it seems to be about the right pricing range for a dedicated modeling application. It's cheaper than ZBrush, which is a sculptor, etc. So the price is quite reasonable if you actually end up needing it for a commercial project. But again, we're using Make here, completely free. So if you wanna try this out, you've got nothing to lose. So go ahead and do the download. Um, they'll ask you for an email address. They don't send you any keys or anything, so feel free to just send them gibberish. And then let's go ahead and erase this guy, the default marker. Now, the cool thing about SketchUp, the way it works, and I, I have to apologize up front, I'm gonna screw up the interface a few times. I'm not an expert with SketchUp by any means, and they've taken a very different approach to a lot of things. First off, it is very minimalistic. There are no primitives for the most part. There's no cube, there's no um, torus or sphere or anything. You've got basic 2D shapes and that's about it. And you kind of use these tools iteratively to make more complex objects. What it does have is very, very solid um, 2D quick sketch tools and Boolean tools. So if you're into like a CSG or um, constructed, I always forget what CSG, um, but basically CSG is like Boolean based uh, composition. So you basically make your objects out of uh, adding and subtracting different objects together. And SketchUp does that very well as we will see in a moment. Um, so the way it ultimately works, you see you've got your axis markers here. Your drawing is ultimately dependent based off of which way you're currently orientated. So here are your primitives to work with. You have rectangle, circle, and polygon. And we'll start with a rectangle. Don't worry, it's not as limiting as it sounds. Come on in here like so and pick your axis of orientation. So there is um, like X, Y. So I'm angled down X, Y, it will draw on that axis. If I'm at Y, um, Z or X, Z. So ultimately there is how you position things in 3D space. Pretty simple, it's a kind of a cool way of doing things, but we'll stick with our simple rectangle shape that we created here. So say we were creating a level, this is uh, say the outer hull of it. Well, now what do we do? Well, in a traditional polygonal modeling tool, you would do, well, you would start it with a cube. You would have probably subdivided it down or done a couple of loop cuts, move some faces around, etc. This works very much differently. You actually build on the same tools. Now, extrusion is still something. Uh, they call it, um, what do you call it? Push-pull, uh, but ultimately this is extrusion. So there we now have a 3D shape but now you use the same tools and layer them over top. So if we wanted that to be the shell of our level, we want to do the inside of our level now, uh, we use the rectangle tool again. And we basically just draw a rectangle on our rectangle. And now I can actually use this tool again to pop it in. So there we are now inside of our level, like so. I could also 
edit this guy after the fact so I could come here and go like so. And I think I need to create one here as well. Like so. So now I could grab it and push pull down. So it's very similar to what you're used to modeling in 3D. It's just, it's doing a lot of it for you. It's a lot of extrusion based stuff. And we can also use obviously the different shapes. So, and then I could pull that face out completely. And basically we just cut a hole in our shape. So we now have a window or a porthole going on. And that's kind of the extent. That's how your basic modeling tools work. I'll get into the Boolean stuff in a second. So when you're creating more complex objects, that's probably the way you're going to work more off. But I want to first off get here to this, um, the texturing. So normally now what you would have to do is UV unwrap this guy and then, you know, move your UVs so that they overlay your various different textures and you're good to go. Well, here there's a much different approach. You come here to your materials, you pick from a bunch of the built-in materials like so. So say we wanted a corrugated metal floor. Grab that, switch into paint mode, and we have a corrugated metal floor. Now that might be a little too corrugated, so we could come back here, edit that, and we could change out the, the mount. It's a one foot by one foot reference. So we have a corrugated metal floor, and let's make this back wall here, I don't know, um, get out of edit mode, back to select mode. We'll go back here, we will pick a brick, make that a brick wall, that a brick wall, that a brick wall and that a brick wall. So you have an idea of just how quickly you can go about creating um, textured actual models that are ready to go. And as I said earlier, that, that export limitation is a little strange because I can come up here and go export 3D model uh, desktop and we can do it as a Colada DXF 3DS model FBX um, OBJ format, etc. So let's just stick with Collada that I was recommending. Oops, let's fire up Blender. Let's try that again. Blender. Here, import, DAE, desktop, untitled. And there you see your textured model ready to go. Ta -da. So, like I said, for, for even just level prototyping to bring into a 3D modeling app of your application of your choice, I don't see workflows getting faster than this, to be honest, for certain kinds of levels and certain kinds of details. Now let's head on back and look back at SketchUp. This isn't about Blender, this is about SketchUp. Let's do a quick deletion here. And I'll show you a little bit about that CSG I was talking about, basically the Boolean um, work. So what I could do here is I can come down here and I could create, and again, it's all these very, very simple tools. So we can start with, again, a rectangle like so. And we can, bring it out. So now let's say I wanted to chamfer off this edge. Well, normally you would use a bevel or a chamfer tool and that's about it. Well, the sketchup way is a little bit different. Instead, what I do is actually draw a two point curve on my surface like so. Ta-da. Select my face, go tools, and you use the follow me tool, which is perhaps one of the most confusing terms ever. But basically I grab my face and then you could grab you can tell it which axis to follow, go around a corner, but in this case, it just went straight down. So I could have also done it, see, let's go if I click there. So I can actually bring it out. So you see the preview of where it's gonna go. And it's gonna cut down to that particular edge, but I could also just keep going. And then I could come back and then we're getting into weirdness. So let's just bring it back to here. So. And there you go, you just carved out that particular shape. And, and that's kind of the gist of how you start doing your modeling. So I can grab this face that we're left over. A couple edges here left over, get rid of them as well. I'm on. 
Next up, you get into your Boolean. So right now we're dealing with basically a collection of faces. I can grab each face individually like so. I can manipulate it, move it around, scale it, etc. So I could grab this face up here and I could scale it down, hold down control to scale to the midpoint between those two points. And you're seeing the mod, the object updates accordingly. Now we've got some leftovers going on here that I wanted, but we'll undo that anyways. But what I'm gonna instead do is I'm gonna grab everything. So go back here to select and just Double click until you get a full selection. Right click this guy and make it into a group. So now this is one object. And now what we can do is create other groups. So I come up here, I could create a circle shape like so. Extrude that sucker out like so. Probably made that a little too big. So here, I'll, I'll turn that into a group anyways. So we're gonna create this guy as a group. Move it over here. So that it goes through our object. Like so. And now what you can do is create more complicated objects by basically taking object number one, object number two, and doing a solid tools subtract. And now object number one has a hole through it. And that is essentially how CSG construction starts working. You basically start adding together and subtracting uh, various different objects from each other to create more complicated shapes. And again, this is really good for creating um, non-organic. So basically modeling humans in this mechanism, not so great. Modeling mechs or um, buildings or you know uh, constructed objects, this workflow is often one of your best approaches. Um, where you've got a lot of sweeping curves or natural straight lines, etc. This is one of the nicest ways to go ahead and model. And then once again, we could come back in here and texture this guy. So I could go to, um, let's see, I think I need to edit group. And I could drop a texture onto... Ta-da! It's ugly as hell, uh, but you get an idea of how you can put various pieces together and make complex modeled textured shapes very, very quickly. Now, another aspect of SketchUp that is quite powerful, I'm not sure your license limitations here, but you've also got those components. Now, you're not able to author these, but you can create them. So what we can do down here is come down into this guy and bring in various different components from uh, their warehouse. Now, I can also, one sec, go to the warehouse this way. So we can go to the 3D warehouse and get, you're basically working with the same thing here and here. And these are entities you can just bring into your world. I believe some are paid, some are free. Um, so let's say we need uh, a tree. Search for a tree, find a tree we like. Oh, that's a nice looking tree. Download, yep, yep, yep. Huh, give this a second. Hopefully we recover from this crash. Ah, there we go. So there is our tree in our world. Um, I'm guessing that tree is pretty dense because my computer is not happy all of a sudden. All right, let me get rid of it, if it lets me. All right, something is not happy with that model. One second. All right, so perhaps not the greatest example, but you do have an idea that stuff is available. Ooh, I do not want to bring it back. There's this guy, so let's grab something else instead. So let's give it a different tree. So you wanted to build a bit of a world. Come in here, search in line, 
find various different trees available, pick the tree you want to use, it will download it and put it in your game world. We can control CV that guy around a little bit. So say now I need a house, search for a house. And we've got many, many houses. Let's grab, I don't know, we'll grab this one. It'll download it, make it available, place it in our game world, like so. i move you back a bit. And uh, I can't even think about bridge. Now we need a bridge. You search into their world library. We get our bridge, bring our bridge, and place it in the world. That's a crappy bridge. There, fancy bridge. So you see how you can grab assets very, very, very quickly for prototyping to drop in. Now I'm not sure actually what the license is for these models. I should actually check that out. Give me one second. All right, so I brought up the license details here for the warehouse. Um, and it doesn't actually specifically talk about games here. Um, you can't use it in a logo. You can use it in uh, computer graphics and visualization departments. You can use it to, to populate scenes. You cannot resell it. Um, and then if you publish your stuff there, so this probably is the most telling piece. If you cr publish to their 3D warehouse, you are granting a royalty-free royalty license to each user and may not charge a fee to download a model. So. I don't know, actually. I don't know if you could go ahead and use these in your game. I would have to reach out. I would. Um, you would have to reach out to find out for sure. Uh, it looks like you definitely can't resell them, but it looks like derived works may be allowed. So I'm not sure if you can actually use these in your game or not. But once again, we can grab this guy, export it out into your 3D model or your 3D application, and get your worlds up and going very, very fast. So even if you're using this just for prototyping purposes, this 3D warehouse could be a pretty powerful thing. Now, another thing we've got going on up here and you'll notice there, is the extensions warehouse. This is where you can get various different plugins for um, different things. So let's go gaming. We've got uh, Soap Skin and Bubble. Hey, I remember that. So you can basically extend the functionality of um, SketchUp, basically, with this plugin. So we get, this would allow me to do uh, generate minimal surfaces from edges, for example. Um, and there's various different tools. We're going back here. We've got um, uh, where's the modeling? Modeling, modeling, modeling. It's probably okay. We'll go to productivity. So you can see there's their ecosystem is absolutely huge. The number of uh, plugins and models and textures, etc., available up there is staggeringly large. So there is a lot of um, extensions that you actually have available to you. I can't go into much more detail on that. Like, so I'm just brushing the surface of what SketchUp is capable of here. And realistically, I am no expert on this. I can't recommend what you, the best extensions are. I am marginally fluent in using this program in the first place. Uh, but that's just because I recently actually revisited. Going forward, this might be something that I do make use of a bit more uh, in my workflow, especially for... Um, you know, if I need to mock up tutorials and I need to create a game world pretty quickly, I don't know, this one's pretty hard to beat, to be honest. Uh, and with the fact that, and again, I don't understand why they say this is a pro-only feature, and this was why SketchUp Free in the past was useless to me, this functionality is in here. So I can export it out to 3D models. And that is, um, that is game changer, to be honest. That was where uh, the program was very limited before, and you basically required the um, full version to do anything of any value. So that, that functionality is there is pretty awesome. And as we saw earlier, it translates into fully textured um, your uh, 3D content tool pretty seamlessly. So, um, you know, this is one that slots into your workflow pretty nicely, even at a free tier. Now, once again, I remember, if you are making money off of this, you do have to buy the pro version. Uh, but, you know, it's pretty impressive overall. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please, of course, do click like. Are you a SketchUp user? What do you think of it? Do I miss out a major feature in this presentation? I know it's only 20 minutes. It's the kind of program you could probably talk for a couple hours on. So I really did skim the surface here. Uh, but I probably did miss your favorite feature or um, didn't properly showcase what you thought. So if I did miss something, do let me know in the comments down below. And of course, if you're into game development tools, technology, that kind of stuff, uh, hopefully we got you covered here. If that's the case, do hit that subscribe button.
All right, that's it for now. I uh, will see you all later. Goodbye.